So I think at this, this point in time where we're, we're seeing this climate crisis, it's coming as part of an intersection of multiple crises. Um, there's both the wider, what's been termed bio-crisis, desertification, um, shortages of drinking water, um, et cetera, et cetera, mass extinctions. Um, and of course, we've got the uh, round narrative of the financial crisis that's affecting the world as well. But also within these kind of massive crises, there are some smaller crises or maybe more locally, territorially based crises. Um, in the UK, we've got what we can kind of see as a, a crisis of representation in that support for politicians is, you could argue, at an all-time low as we've gone from scandal to scandal, from the, um, the um, MPs' expenses scandals to the public money that they've spent on things such as moats and duck houses and et cetera, et cetera, which has meant that people are at an all-time low in support for uh, mainstream represent representative democracy. Um, and we've also got a, a kind of higher education crisis across Europe. There's over 40 universities occupied. In the States, there's been universities occupied. Um, a huge movement in Italy against neoliberalisation of uh, the academy. And at the institution where I'm based in Leeds, we're facing 10% cuts um, for, for rolling cuts over five years, which there's now a, a social struggle around. Um, so I'm interested in how these crises are related, what's at their root, how they can start to communicate. Um, I think arguably at the root you can see capitalism and its endless, um, endless quest for further accumulation and the commodification of everything from education to life to the environment, the atmosphere, etc. Um, and I think one of the things that uh, potentially stops these crises linking up or that potentially stops the climate crisis from communicating to a wider sort of crisis of capitalism is the, uh, what I'm going to argue is a kind of um, carbon consensus which has meant that the struggle around climate change in, in many places and certainly from my experiences I think in the movements in the UK has created what we can kind of term a post-political space of, um, of climate change. But which I mean that the, um, like Gary pointed out, the discourse has been so dominated by science, so dominated by parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere, that it's effectively pushed the social aspects of that struggle to one side. Um, and what this has meant, what this has meant, even within the sort of more grassroots radical movements such as the Camp for Climate Action, of which I'm a part, is that we've started to justify action based on scientific discourse rather than any kind of wider um, political critique or analysis or, or social struggle. And that one of the um, sort of neutralising effects of this in terms of political strategy is that it fails to find any sort of fundamental antagonism and constantly tries to construct an antagonism based on these kind of what I would argue are false antagonisms. So, for example, at the sort of worst end of that, you can see the blaming of humanity as a whole, as if we're all universally just as responsible for the climate crisis as big corporations and, and those with lots of power.